When DICE decided to switch from 2142 back to the present day, they knew they wanted to push the boundaries of the Battlefield franchise. For one thing, while Battlefield was a dominant player in the multiplayer shooter space, they had never had a strong campaign. For another, despite their rabid fanbase on the PC side, their only console game had been a disappointment. So for the next Battlefield game, DICE launched an all-out assault on these unconquered portions of the gaming world. In 2006, they announced that their next game would feature a full narrative single player and would be console exclusive. The campaign revolved around a misfit unit in the US Army that goes AWOL in the quest for stolen gold. It was told in the vein of a fun B-movie, with over-the-top action and a dark sense of humor. You sure you're in the right place? I believe so, sir. This is B Company, right? Yep, sure is. But you want to cut out that sir, yes sir crap? I'm a sergeant, not the goddamn president. Okay, sorry sir. Compared to anything else in the Battlefield library, it was by far the most in-depth and immersive campaign DICE had ever done. But the developer had one trick up their sleeve. For their new game, they'd be building a brand new okay. engine from the ground up. We've always been making our own engines, and sometimes we've kind of stepped back in questions of what we're doing, since it's, it's costful, it's painful. I've been in on most of the Battlefield games where uh, we build the engine and the game at the same time, and it's it's not really a, a recipe for success. And now I think as the company has matured with the games we make, with the experience we built up through the years, uh, it is an enormous asset and tool for us to be able to build games around. Uh, and in many of the things we do in the Battlefield games, we don't really see other engines doing out there. Aside from allowing them to do whatever they wanted and make it look great, their new engine, named Frostbite, would showcase a mammoth change to Battlefield gameplay. Fully destructible environments. Every game would now play out differently, and campers hiding in a building would no longer be safe. Destructible environments are relatively rare in gaming, and the feature would grow into one of the marketing buzzwords of the title. But by going console only, DICE faced a major backlash. Battlefield was a beloved title in the PC world, but those same PC gamers now felt betrayed. There was a sense in the community that PC consumers had built the Battlefield franchise, and now they were being abandoned. It was a lesson DICE wouldn't forget. But for console players, Battlefield Bad Company proved to be a fantastic title when it released in June 2008 after numerous delays. DICE had finally managed to port their addicting multiplayer experience to the TV screen, and its blend of vehicles, teamwork, and frantic combat ensnared the console world just as it had the PC. Lay down your arms and we will take you by force. Says you and what army? What? I just always wanted to say that. The addition of destructible environments was praised as far more than a marketing game. It was a game-changing feature worth the price of admission alone. Sadly, DICE's much-touted campaign didn't meet with the same reaction. The goofy, humorous style didn't seem to fit with the seriousness of modern combat. While it was a good effort by the multiplayer developer, it just didn't stand up in the face of its more dramatic competition. 